Okay, so hi, I'm Liza if you don't know me. Um, and uh, I'm gonna talk about personal branding, but I first wanna know, I wanna get kind of an idea of who's in the room. So who here is a student currently studying? Okay, and who's like in their career? Okay, okay, so everyone's, I mean, it, there's kind of an overlap. I know it's not like defining, that's kind of part of what I'm talking about today, how there is an overlap, but um, yeah, I just wanted to get an idea for what everybody's looking for out of this. And also, uh, study paths, who's doing journalism? Not a single journalism student? Okay, that, this would be important for them, so okay. Uh, visual art? Just Katie, okay. <laughs> um, humanities? Okay, okay. Um, what else, business? Okay, am I missing something? What else do people study here? IR, yeah, who's doing IR? Okay, and did I say business? Yeah, okay, that's everything. Anything I'm missing? No? Okay. Um, okay, so I just kind of wanted to know who is here, what you're looking for, because, I mean, personal branding, it's obviously personal, like that's kind of the whole thing, but uh, it does really kind of also depend on uh, your career path. So, anyway, without further ado, um, hi, I'm Liza. Um, I, uh, I am a web editor and analyst at my day job. Um, I'm also a content creator, as you might know. Um, and I am an alum, alumna, alumna of uh, AAU. Uh, and actually, the last time that I was here talking in front of people was at graduation. Um, and I like, don't remember almost any of it. I remember getting up going up to this actual podium and like clinging onto it for dear life because I think I wrote the speech in like two days and I like blacked out, not physically on the ground, but like <laughs> blacked out, don't remember what I said. Um, I do remember getting to my phone afterwards and everybody was texting me because they're like, you didn't pay your rent for the whole first semester and yeah, I didn't pay my rent in Prague for the whole first semester and like, to be fair, nobody came after me so how was I supposed to know that I wasn't paying? Um, <laughs> but. Yeah, I have made a lot of mistakes throughout, well, life, but especially since I moved abroad because it's hard to navigate. Um, and I think a lot of those mistakes have, luckily the, uh, the date of expiration for embarrassment has kind of moved on. So I've talked about them online plenty, in podcasts, on my TikTok, on whatever, medium I could for some reason not shut up and tell people about my mistakes and of course I'm oddly kind of thankful for them because not only like okay there's a stereotype like oh le like a mistake is a lesson learned sort of thing so yeah I learned a lot especially about the Czech visa system like I would not wish the level of knowledge I have on the Czech visa system on literally anybody it's absurd I'm yeah <laughs> if you need to know anything though like yeah but it also it really, uh, it started like a mission for me because um, as I talk about my mistakes and lessons I've learned, I started to give advice to people. And I wish I could like say that I had this aha moment and I was like, I'm gonna start creating content and make this my personal brand and helping people is going to be my thing. I didn't because actually my social media, my personal branding it began by accident. <laughs> Just like many things I've done, um, my first TikTok I posted was a mistake. Not like posting it, like I didn't accidentally hit post. Um, I was procrastinating on an essay that I had to do the next day. Um, as I do with a lot of things, I was procrastinating and I was like, instead of, you know, like productive procrastination, um, th this wasn't even one of those cases. Usually I would like update my LinkedIn profile or like clean my room so I feel better about myself for procrastinating. This time I posted a TikTok and um, it was like not the first TikTok I had ever posted because I had like reposted things, but it was the first TikTok I ever made. And uh, it like instantly blew up, which was surprising because I had like three followers and it did not help with the procrastination. I didn't write my essay that night horrible mistake. I think I finally started writing at like 5 a.m. Um, I was just like shocked by what was happening on my phone. But 
like other mistakes, I learned a lesson and not the lesson to not procrastinate. I still am working on that one. But I learned, um, I learned about the potential that was there with social media, with uh, just putting yourself out there and saying something. My first uh, TikTok was actually about my thesis. Um, and it was a thesis that I hadn't written yet, so I was getting all these questions. And everyone was like, oh my god, tell us more. And I was like, I don't know more. Like, I just know the topic. So I couldn't really continue with that. But I started to get DMs on Instagram um, from all sorts of people. Like, even some kid from, like, he had, like, a TV show on Disney. And it was, like, from past my, like, Disney years. So I didn't know who the kid was until I Googled him two weeks later. And I was like, oh my god. Um, <laughs> like, but... I re it really started to click at that moment. So I posted another TikTok after that, um, and it was about a subject that I could really talk on, which was being an international student. Um, I hadn't just out of nowhere started talking about it. I had been already kind of growing this as my personal brand for years. I had been uh, helping new students come to AIU since I started. Like in my first semester, um, I started uh, interviewing, not interviewing, but like talking with other students who were considering coming. Um, and I did do an interview for a newspaper and all of that. But this is something I had already been kind of doing, so I just started doing it more publicly. Um, and that's where I started to, yeah, I gained this mission, started to really grow a personal brand at that point. Um, and yeah, uh, because it was kind of unintentional little mistake. It was very genuine and authentic. And that's where I've been really thankful with my mission because it's something that I genuinely enjoy doing. So I wanted to ask, do you guys feel like you have personal brands? You cannot or no, yeah, no? Well, <laughs> hate to break it to you, you do. We all have a personal brand, whether you like it or not, there's somebody who's got something to say about you. Actually, everybody you meet has something to say about you, and that's your personal brand. It's essentially your reputation. Um, it's how people know you. It's what they would call on you for. Think of it like when, you, when you're when trying to figure out an outfit and you have one friend that you'll text, and you're like, okay, they know exactly what I should wear to this event. Or you're writing an essay and you're like, uh, I get like stuck, or you, you need somebody to proofread, you have a friend that you'll go to for that, or career advice or whatever. We all have those people in our lives that we will go to right away, and that's their personal brand to you. Um, for example, I had this friend in high school, James, and oh, I probably shouldn't have said his name in case he watches. Oh, well. Um, I had this friend in high school, um, and he was just brutally honest. Like, I, and he was also a fantastic writer. So every time I had an essay, I would send it to him and be like, hey, can you read this if you have time? And he would just tear it apart. But that also made my writing way better because I, could trust him that he would tell me the truth and he would break it down and I would make my essays 10 times better. And so that's what I always called on him for. Now I really haven't seen him post, I haven't seen anything in years and that's the personal brand I still have associated with him even though I think he went into, like he's a doctor or something, but I don't know anything else about his personal brand because we left off after high school, he doesn't post anything, he doesn't share about his interests on LinkedIn or Instagram. So all I know is that he's really good at writing essays, at least in 11th grade, he was really good at writing essays. So whether you like it or not, you've got a personal brand, you've got something that people will want to call on you for, and you're also possibly really missing out on opportunities because people change and evolve, your interests change, you learn new things, and if people don't know what you're good at, they're not gonna call on you for that. Like if you're really good at writing or you have a lot of knowledge about human rights or politics, if people don't know that, they can't say, hey, there's this internship that opened up or there's a speaking opportunity or a podcast, they can't call on you for that. So creating a personal brand is going to help you secure opportunities like that. I should put this on silent. And um, also help you beat imposter syndrome, which sounds kind of far-fetched, but it wasn't until I started to post about my interests, share my knowledge, engage in discourse with other people that I really was like, okay, I kind of, I, maybe I do belong in the working world. Maybe I do belong in this area of academics and whatnot and career. Um, yes. And 
Also, if you don't create a personal brand, there's a danger in that because, for example, say my friend from high school, I don't know anything about his personal brand anymore, I don't know what he's doing, but all of a sudden something big happens and he gets associated with something that has nothing to do with who he is. You get stuck in that. There was um, this comedian that I heard on a podcast talking about how she, uh, she, started, po she started talking about um, uh, her mental health in some of her comedy and that became her thing, that became her brand, is that she's the comedian that talks about her depression and how difficult that can be because that's all that she is now is her depression. Like there's no escaping because that's all people can associate with her. Or a journalist who wrote one very, very successful article, which was great at first for her career, but it was about a traumatic experience that she had. And since she hadn't built up her personal brand before that, that's all people knew her as was this traumatic experience. So of course those are kind of extreme examples, but if people don't know who you are as a full person, they don't know how they can call on you except for the one thing that they do know. So having a personal brand is taking control of that narrative. It's bringing control back to who you are and showing the world what you want to put out there. And yeah, that's what personal branding really is. Um, thank you. <laughs> so what it's not. Have you guys, or I'm sure you have, but have you heard of the phrase niching down? Yeah, I mean, it's everywhere now. Everyone's like, oh, you gotta niche down. You have to find your thing. And that's not personal branding. And I don't think that you should niche down. Um, I think that for one, it creates a lot of pressure. It can cause you to be inauthentic in what you're doing. Um, it can pigeonhole you, get you stuck in that one thing. Um, and again, missed opportunities if you niche down to the one thing, even though you have the whole array of other interests. Um, it's also not just content creation. A lot of people tend to associate personal branding as a thing just for influencers. Um, and it's not, it's for everybody. Uh, it's for lawyers and doctors and journalists and any career space that you're in. You, people need to know what they can call on you for. But content creation is part of it because you do need to put your word out there. You need people to know who you are. But it can be more of a balance between, I like to use this uh, kind of visual as kind of a spectrum of maximalism, which is the posting every day, absolute content creation machine, uh, all just all in. And then there's the management side, which is posting what you have, when you have it, not overdoing it, not getting burnt out. It's con uh, personal branding isn't just the maximalism, always making everything that you post about your personal brand. Um, and it's also not rigid. If you choose to start personal branding, which, or working on your personal brand, since we all have personal brands, it's not like a career decision. Just because you start working on your personal brand doesn't mean you're like sacrificing yourself to the corporate gods. Like you can, move and be flexible in your personal brand. What it is, is it's, the, it's an intentional reflection of who you are. So you are probably niche enough, I'm not gonna lie, like you don't need to find your niche when you as an individual, like you already have enough interests and specific things about you that are niche enough. You know, I mean, most people are not all the way from like being really into like atmospheric chemistry to journalism to human rights to law. Like we don't have so many diverse uh, things around. And if you do, great, like that's impressive. But you know, you're probably already kind of in your own niche. You already have your topic, you already have your thing. You don't need to niche down to something hyper specific. Um, and you also don't wanna get to limit yourself to just a topic. You can show your skills and your traits and who you are. There's kind of uh, this issue when you niche down, it could be more of being recognized with your niche than you. You want to be recognizable for your name. So if, uh, if your personal brand evolves, 
people recognize you. I mean, this is something I actually didn't do well with. Uh, for example, I still get people like messaging me saying, hey, I'm gonna be in Prague this weekend, do you wanna grab a coffee? And I'm like, I live in Brussels, like I'm not in Prague. And so people really associate me with that Prague girl. I had people say that, oh, you're that Prague girl. I'm like, yes, but now I don't live there. So that's something I, I didn't do well with. I got too niche down, not recognizable by name. Um, yeah, so it should be a full representation of who you are, not fully. I also think that you need to leave some stuff for yourself, keep some things to yourself. Um, but it's an intentional reflection of who you are, not just your niche. Um, and then also, uh, rather than uh, being a content creation machine, it's consistent communication. Um, it's making sure you don't go a year without posting or sharing your interest or uh, putting something out there that's more intentionally about what you want people to perceive you as rather than just uh, photos of you with your friends, which is really fun, like posting photos with friends. And you don't need to give that up. I'm not saying give that up at all, but it's the intentional, consistent communication so people know what they can call on you for. And also, it's evolving and growing, like I was just saying. It's not rigid and it's not a career decision. So while I was uh, writing this, I actually was using my notebook and it has all these little quotes in it um, at the top. And this one came up while I was writing and taking notes and deciding what I was gonna say. Um, and it's a quote from Henry Miller. One's destination is never a place, but rather a new way of looking at things. And I thought that was really appropriate in here because it's not just the thing, it's how you are as a whole being. It's the way you look at you're not, you're not aiming for a niche for a place. You're aiming to look at it as a well-rounded personal brand. So does that make sense? I talk really fast. Sorry. Um, anyway, so this is where I kind of wanted to talk a little bit more about, uh, or help you guys get the tools, I guess, to uh, build a personal brand, not just hear me talk about it, yada, 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 get bored, move on. Um, <laughs> I wanted to help you guys get the, the tools and start because there's three main steps, three problems you have to solve in order to build a really strong personal brand. The first is figuring out your brand. It's figuring out your narrative. The second is communicating that narrative effectively. And the third is aiming for thought leadership. So all, if you do all this, you'll be able to gain opportunities, uh, grow in your career, gain confidence, um, by step two even, you'll start to gain opportunities. But I wanted us all to take step one here now. So, so sorry, you have to actually participate, I hope. Please participate, that would be so awkward if you didn't, okay. Um, so the first one is discovering your narrative. Um, discovering your narrative entails deciding what you want the world to see of you, like what the version of you that you wanna put forward. So. It's how the world sees you, what do you see in yourself, and who are you authentically? So, I'm sure a lot of you are here with a friend or somebody you know, if not, you're gonna make a friend. Um, <laughs> but I, everybody, I would like everybody to turn, turn to their friend or the person sitting next to them um, and name, not for yourself, but give them two technical skills or knowledge sets that you associate with them, and two to three uh, characteristics or soft skills that you associate with them. So there's also, I hope that you can see well on the screen. Okay, yeah, so your technical skills could be like software programs, could be art, could be uh, whatever, writing, things like that. Um, and soft skills are gonna be more of like your characteristics, your personality traits, that sort of thing. So. Go for it. <laughs> Get to know each other a little bit. Okay, so uh, how was that? Mm -hmm. Awesome. I love the, the enthusiasm, Katie. <laughs> Great, <laughs> okay. So um, what do you guys think? Do you agree with the other person who had to say with you? Do you think that it was a pretty accurate representation of who you are? Kinda, yeah, a little bit. Well, that's kind of the next step is to take that audit, what we just did, and reflect on it, revise. The conversation went on for a little while, so I feel like it was not just a one, this is what you are, okay. I feel like we talked about it a little bit. So take what they just said and kind of reflect, revise on that, um, and 
revise on that. Can you say that? No, you can revise that um, and uh, kind of consider what you also want to uh, communicate to the world. So, for example, uh, I did this with my friends earlier this week. I asked them just on my Instagram story, like, I'm doing an image audit because I'm talking about it later this week. And I want to know, what do you guys think of me? And they gave me things like, I got bubbly, I got good storyteller, I got, uh, I don't know, I can't remember anymore. Um, I got, <laughs> uh, should have wrote it down, but um, they gave me some good ones, I promise. <laughs> um, things like kind and helpful, that sort of stuff. And I took that and I felt like it was accurate. Um, and I was, you know, I was happy with it. But there were other things that I also wanted to add in there. For example, I consider myself a very strategic thinker. I currently, I'm, uh, like I said, I'm a web editor and analyst, and the analyst part is like my favorite part. I love like working in Google Analytics and deciding on the strategy of how we'll fix the web page and thinking about it all like it's a puzzle. I'm very much a strategic thinker, so that's something I would also strive to put into my personal brand because you know, that maybe isn't something that my friends see because I tend to be a little bit chaotic at times. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's something that I see in myself and would like to add in there. But the key to doing that, to adding things in there also, is to be authentic about it. Because you can try as hard as you like to put some other version of yourself out there, but if it's not really you, nobody's going to buy it. And that's where, like, a lot of content-creators and people in general kind of fail with building a personal brand or putting something out there, they try to put a version of themselves, this idealized version of themselves, or this version that they want to be, but it's not really them. And so people, they can see through that. Like people can see when you're not being authentic or real, and they're not gonna, they're not gonna obviously believe it. They're not gonna call on you for those things because it doesn't seem real to them. So maintaining authenticity also, that's where your talents are going to lie in the things that you are good at. Like embracing who you really are and what you're really good at is really key because if you're not good at it, then why should people call on you for it? So you need to be authentic about that. And if you don't know what you want to put into the world, who you want to be, one tip I heard from a lot of experts say was to look to your idols. There was one... Uh, one professor from, I think, like Michigan State University or something, who she uh, asks her students to make a list of five friends. They can be real friends or they can be, you know, friends they'd love to have, idols, um, and write down the, uh, the characteristics in them that they look to, that they admire in them. Um, so you can do that as well. Like, for example, I was like, I want to try this out. I looked up Emma Watson. Um, I looked up uh, Michelle Obama, or not looked up, but I like the, the people that I wrote down. And then I also looked up the traits that kind of characterize them. Um, also, Ava Zubek, I don't know if anybody knows who she is. She's really, really cool. Um, she's like a traveler on Instagram. But I looked at these people and I was like, these are people that I admire, especially women that I admire. And sometimes it can be hard to characterize why. So I just sat back, thought about what I liked in them. Maybe they're adventurous, they seem open-minded, um, or grounded, that sort of thing. And I thought about how I would like to kind of internalize those things as well. Um, but yeah, so the next step, after you've reflected, revised, thought about that, which I think we all kind of did in conversation, unless anybody wants to take five minutes to write it down or something. No, okay, we're gonna just move on then. Um, is the next step is to look at where your platforms stand. So who's on social media? Yes, okay, most of us are on social media nowadays. It's kind of the reality of the world we live in. That's also why personal branding is so important because any employer can just look you up on Instagram and they are gonna see what, who you are, what they're gonna get. Um, but so I want you to open up your phones and, which I guess you don't hear in lectures very much, but I feel kind of cool for saying that. Um, <laughs> open up your phone and go to the platform that you think represents you the best. Either your Instagram, I think Instagram is actually a really great uh, tool for this because you can look at your grid and it's a very visual representation of you. Um, 
So look at your Instagram or your LinkedIn if you're very career oriented. Um, look at it and see, does it reflect those qualities that you just talked about that you have as part of your personal brand? So yeah, open it up, go look and see what you think, if it does. <laughs> so um, yeah, I, we all looked at our platforms. Do you guys in general feel like it reflects you and who you want to put into the world well? Okay, kind of. So there's some improvements to be made. Does anybody have concrete like improvements that they know they could make to reflect themselves better? Oh, Matilda, I'll get to you next. I have, I have some pictures, uh -huh. and, but I don't have any videos, and I don't have any like written content or anything that's like, okay, so I have pictures of like me traveling or being with friends, but I would love to have some of my politics or like my geology since of my NGO work. That would be really cool to have. Yeah, that would be perfect, exactly. I, especially if you have existing content already, it's not that hard to just put it on your profile or share it from whatever profile it's, exact, it's on already. That's exactly what you can do. Katie? Um, over the summer, I started making TikToks about me like repurposing an old sketchbook of mine because I kind of wanted to get more creative or feel like I was just being productive with my creativity. But I gave myself the task of like creating a video every single day, and I got totally burned out. Yeah. I just like haven't uploaded anything since then and like I'm still sketching but like I just don't reach for my phone anymore because it's like, a lot it feels like a lot of pressure yeah. it's like exhausting yeah like that's that's another really good point is like if you sometimes challenging yourself to post every day or overloading yourself you're gonna burn out and then you're not gonna want to post anything I have caught myself in that so many times where it feels like such a task like I feel like I have to be posting every day and I have done that in the past and when it was what I was doing full-time great, but it almost needs to be a full-time job to be able to post every day. That's why consistency and management is so important over full content creation overload. Yeah, those are good examples. Anybody else have something they want to share? No? Okay. <laughs> so, but those are really good examples. So, that leads us to, so since we've already, okay, well, let's revise. So, we've already looked at how, or talked about how others perceive us. We've considered what we want to be more of how the world looks at us. And this also, I know this is all like we're doing it in like half an hour. So there's, <laughs> we can uh, reflect again also later. But we've looked at how the world sees us, done a little image audit. We've reflected on whether we want that to be the image we have out in the world. And we've looked at how our platforms stand at the moment. So gotten that far. The next step would be also revising your platforms and all that but also the main thing is opening up that line of communication so you can put that narrative that you want the world to be seeing out into the world. So this is where you're really, you're, you're taking control of the narrative instead of letting other people fill in the gaps. For example, like if an employer were to be looking at your profile, your LinkedIn, your Instagram, whatever public profiles you have out there, they're going to look and they'll be like, okay, well, there's not much here. And they're going to have to kind of fill in the gaps of who you are on their own. By opening up that line of communication, you're filling it in for them. You're telling them who you are. Um, and yeah, that's taking that control. Um, but yeah, if you don't open that line of communication, how are they going to know? You can define all you like who you want to be, but nobody's going to know who you are, or what you have to give if you don't put it out there for people to see. So this step two is something that you can all do this weekend. Like this is something that you can start implementing after this or tomorrow or Sunday. Like you guys can all start doing that. And so what's great about this step two section is that it'll already start to get you opportunities. You don't need to go through to step three if you don't want to, but just doing this stuff will already start to get you more relevant opportunities that you could consider for your career or also, what's great about opportunities is you can realize you really don't want to do that in your career. But just opening that line of communication is already going to help you start to secure those, uh, those opportunities. So what you can do this weekend to start is going to be choosing your platform platforms. I think that choosing one platform is a great place to start, and or one or two. But career-wise, like you have to have LinkedIn and like. Everybody says that, but, but 
you really have to have LinkedIn. And it needs to be a full profile because that uh, platform is it's like a search engine for employees. I know people who, for example, one of my, um, uh, I'm taking Dutch classes at the moment, and one of my uh, classmates, he, uh, he was saying how um, after graduation, unlike in Czech Republic, you don't get full access to the job market in Belgium. So there's a lot of people who struggle to get jobs after graduating because they have to be sponsored or they don't have the experience. Entry level salaries really aren't the minimum salary that you need to get a visa. He got, like, uh, he got recruited through LinkedIn because there was one very niche skill that he had on his profile. Just because his, his LinkedIn portfolio was, he had all of his skills on there, all of his technical skills, all his soft skills, he had just a full profile. And because of one very niche software program that he had on there, they found him and they hired him before he even graduated. So he has a good paying job now that otherwise like possibly would have got him sent back to his home country had he not had that on his LinkedIn profile. So you have to have a LinkedIn profile. Um, but also, you have to choose your other platforms if you want to do more platforms. LinkedIn is kind of a must, but if that's where you're headed if you're doing this for a career. But each platform has kind of a purpose. So for example, Instagram tends to be really good at showing your personality. You also probably have a lot of people you already know on there, so it's your closer community um, and communicating your interests to that circle of people that you already have. Um, Facebook as well also is gonna be an older demographic and I don't think that it's actually like, I don't think we should fully disregard Facebook as career opportunities because there's gonna be Possibly, if you're anything like me, a lot of my mom's friends and my dad's friends and my aunts and uncles and all those older people in my life who already have established careers. And so if they, already being further up in the career chain than me, have an opportunity and they know that I've been doing these things, they're going to be like, oh, right, Laura's daughter is really good at this hair, sorry, um, and might call on me for an opportunity. Um, for if you're aiming for reach, then TikTok is really good for that. It's you get on for you page and you can really gain reach with that. Um, so LinkedIn also is great for reach. If you're going to be creating content, posting it on LinkedIn, really great for reach. Um, YouTube is really good for fostering a community and uh, driving discussion. And same thing with Twitter. It's very discussion based and there's a really big academic community on there. So if you want to do something like get a PhD, or you want to be in the scientific community, Twitter, like that's great. Also Mastodon, I don't know much about Mastodon, but all the scientists are on Mastodon. So if you want to be a scientist, you got to be on Mastodon. I had not even heard about it until like six months ago. Um, yeah, so first up is choosing your platforms so that you can focus. Because if you try to do all that, like I know I just gave a huge list of platforms and what they're good at, but like that's a lot. Choosing one platform to kind of make your home base will make it feel more manageable um, and not feeling overwhelmed with all the options. Um, yeah, again, with management, that management side of things instead of the maximalism and not feeling overwhelmed or burnt out is posting content you already have, which you could be thinking like, I don't have any content. I don't have anything to post. Like, what am I going to put on there? You do. Like, I, I tell my boss this all the time. Content is everywhere. How, like, I mean, if you've written an essay already this year and you really enjoyed writing it, put it on your LinkedIn. Say, hey, I just wrote this really interesting essay about this, this, this. It's that easy. Or if you are in a club and the club posts a photo, share it to your, your own profile. Um, if you worked on a project and you were really into it, that sort of stuff. Academically, there's so much content out there if you're already interested in it. And LinkedIn is like, the least embarrassing platform because everybody on there is just on there to grow their career. Like that's the best part about it. Like you're all there for that career space. So like I used to never post on LinkedIn because I was like, mm, like it's awkward. Like everybody knows I'm just here because it's like a career thing. But exactly. That's why it's like great because you can just post whatever you want on there and work on focusing on growing your career and nobody's going to care because that's just what you're there for. It's all about celebrating each other's accomplishments and such. Um, and yeah, posting existing content, but posting consistently, because that's where the recency effect comes in. So if you're posting regularly, 
doesn't have to be like a once a week post. Sometimes I like I know people who will do like once a month they post just an update or talk about a new topic they're interested in or whatever. But consistently posting, or yeah, consistently posting will start to you'll start to uh, see the recency effect, which is people remember the last. It's like people are more likely to remember the last things in a series. So if you are in one field and maybe people are posting regularly in there or whatever, but say somebody knows five people in, who are journalists, but you're the one who's posting once a week or regularly, and so they're, you're the last journalist that they saw, they're gonna think of you first because you're the person who they saw last. So continually refresh your own memory in other people's minds by posting consistently so people will remember you and come to you first. Um, and then also, the third thing is connecting and engaging. So one of my favorite things to do career-wise is, first of all, is building a community. I love having a community of people to talk to and network with, but especially to engage with people. And not just on a level. When I say connect and engage, I don't mean followers. I don't mean gaining a following, whatever. I can tell you like followers is a vanity metric. It literally doesn't matter. You can have 20 followers and have 20 incredibly valuable followers and be way more, way set up way better than someone with a million followers. Like it really doesn't matter. What matters is how you engage with them and how you connect with your community. That's so much more important. So one of my biggest tips is to ask for help, which sounds kind of silly, but that Michigan professor I was talking about before, um, she has her students, she challenges them to make a post on LinkedIn asking for help in one way or another. Um, and I think that for me, what I think is good is either asking your community or directly asking one person. So for example, if you were to ask in your make a post saying, hey, I'm a humanities student. I want to get into human rights. Does anybody here work in human rights and recommend a class that I can take? That's going to, I mean, they're going to feel more involved in your journey there. So it's going to start to uh, trigger that reciprocity. They're going to feel a little bit more engaged in your journey. And maybe a few years down the line, they'll be like, hey, I recommended you this class to take. Did you take it? Also, there's a job opening here you might be interested in. People are gonna feel more engaged and they're gonna to wanna to participate in your journey more and feel more invested in your journey as well. I also really like to do professional interviews and I got this advice, I think about a year ago, to do professional interviews. And in the past year, it's been in, like incredibly helpful. I started just messaging people that I, that either were recommended to me or that I found on LinkedIn. And they had a career that I was like, wow, really interesting, really cool. I want to be doing that. And so I would message them and just say like, hey, I was recommended to you by this person that we know mutually. Um, or, hey, I saw that you were with my colleagues at this meeting or whatever. Um, I'm really interested in this part of your career. Would you mind having a Zoom call or a coffee to chat about what you're doing? And I've probably done like three or four since September. I think I did a few over the summer as well. And from that, like my first one, started talking to someone, turns out he actually knew who I was, which was really surprising. But so he already had that reciprocity uh, aspect there because I've already connected with him in a way. But also the little discussion that we had ended up finishing with like a, hey, if we don't have any job openings right now, but when we do, I'll contact you. And so I was looking for a job. I was like, that's great. But I mean, obviously I don't have one right now. But you know, that was already starting to move me forward. Like they don't have something right now, but when they do, he's gonna contact me for a job. And so I'm gonna continue to keep up with, with uh, this person and you know, remind him that I'm there and available for when a job comes up. So connecting and engaging with people, asking for help. That is literally, I promise, it'll be so helpful in helping move you forward. Um, yes, and so we're getting to the end because this is step three. So like these were things that you can do this weekend. Like you could 
choose a platform to start focusing on to start posting post existing content, post about an essay or a project you did, whatever. And you can connect to people this weekend. Like these are all things you could do after this right now or this weekend. This is going to be more of long term stuff. So the next two steps are more long term career and a set, like setting you up for more of a thought leadership position. So the first one is demonstrating to communicate. So this is more demonstrating your skills, not just whereas like here you're just communicating. You're just putting it out there that you're good at this, 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 or whatever. The demonstrating to communicate is demonstrating your skills. So this is more of showing that you, through your content, not just talking about your area of interest, but also showing that you're an effective communicator or you have really good editing skills. Maybe you're a graphic designer, you want to be a graphic designer, so you start talking about something you're really interested in and you're also creating really good graphics to go with it. Uh, maybe you are, you want to go into something like uh, social work and by showing, uh, by working with a community, managing community online, you're showing that you're a people person um, or that you have attention to detail, that you're consistent, uh, effective communication, that sort of stuff. Like this step is more of this is where it becomes even more intentional with your posting to not just talk about your areas of interest, but to also demonstrate your skills. So when an employer looks at your profile, they're going to see, oh, this person has these, these traits. And it's not just marking these as your skills on LinkedIn, but it's also showing that you are this way. Um, and the last one, this is the last step. This is like the key difference between just getting offered opportunities and also having opportunities created for you. So this is, well, contribute purposeful and valuable discourse. So this is really creating original content. This is uh, bringing value to others, helping others, posting with the intention of helping people. That's like, this is really the, the key difference between just putting yourself out there and putting yourself out there in a way that will really trigger people to see the value in you and then create opportunities for you. For example, right here talking now. This is an opportunity which was kind of created for me. I didn't apply for anything. I just got asked to come. Um, same thing with like podcast episodes. I've been on several podcasts. I've been offered jobs on cold calls because somebody was impressed with what they saw on my profiles and they called me and said hey do you want a job <laughs> you know like that sort of thing where opportunities are going to start to get created for you when you're contributing value to a conversation and doing so with purpose when you bring value and help others they'll help you too so yeah um, and that's where also you will start to establish yourself as a thought leader in your field and get much bigger opportunities. So especially with thought leadership comes more quick advancement in your field. So cannot say how key this is. It's not, you can already build a personal brand without it. Like, don't get me wrong. If you don't want to build a platform and you don't want to be creating content consistently, you can already build a personal brand. But becoming a thought leader in your field is going to be like the key difference between just being the first person that comes to people's mind and coming to somebody's mind and them wanting to make sure you get the position or that, hey, let's, put, let's create a position for this person in the company because you're good at what you do. So summing it up, creating a personal brand is going to get you opportunities. It's going to allow you to become a thought leader. You'll also begin to achieve mission-driven goals. I didn't talk too much about that, but as you go through, as you discuss with people um, in your field, in your area, as you build your network, you're going to learn, and you're going to learn about yourself, and you're going to naturally start to fall down sort of a path or a mission, kind of where I ended up falling down this path, this mission, and um, also gain career confidence without imposter syndrome that I 
seriously struggled with imposter syndrome and I feel much more confident after speaking to other professionals who already recognized me as a thought leader. I didn't need to prove myself. They already knew who I was and they already knew who I was, what I was capable of. So I never, no longer have to feel like an imposter in the workplace or anything. Um, so yeah, that is everything. If you would like to listen to some podcasts that I really would recommend about thought leadership, or uh, there was a TED Talk also, um, they're linked here. Also, so are my profiles as well, if you want to look at those. <laughs> but I really recommend the, uh, the podcast. There are four podcasts that I went through so many podcasts to prepare for this. I study for everything through podcasts, and I don't know if that's like a great tip to give, but I study through literally everything through podcasts. And so I selected my four favorites and put them up there and also one really good TED Talk about it. So you can scan that and listen to those on Spotify. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, time for questions. questions. I'll sit. If they can still see me down there. Yeah. Oh, I feel. Definitely, Liza was asked to come. It's for a good degree, so we're very happy. Um, yeah. So, uh, any questions regarding the topic? I would like oh. to ask, uh, how long were you building your brand? How long well, it like for you? I feel like people can't see me. I feel, I'm going to stand up. I'll stand because I, feel, I want people to be able to see my face. Um, OK. <laughs> so with personal brand building, I'm still building it. It's kind of like a never-ending journey. Like, I definitely, where I stand right now, I think that the things that people associate with me now, I mean, I think it honestly goes back to high school. Because your personal brand is just a reflection of you. I remember in high school, <laughs> this is so weird. Uh, my uh, one of my friends told me that the girls in the year above me thought I was some travel goddess because I had been. I swear that's what she said. I'm not making that up. It sounds so weird, but because I had been to Greece and Tanzania, and they were like, "Wow, she's seen the world," and <laughs> and um, I'm from a small town. Okay, um, and. Travel is still something that kind of has come along in my journey as well, and it's not, it's more about having lived abroad now, but travel is also still associated. But I, my personal brand began to be built a long time ago because it's just a reflection of who you are, but intentionally building my personal brand um, instead of just kind of hoping that people know what I'm into, but really putting some intention behind it. Um, I would say that probably began in the summer of 2020, because that's when I really started to, uh, I started posting on TikTok in the spring, um, and it took a little bit of time to figure out what I was doing and decide what I wanted to do with this platform, but what I really, when I felt confident being in front of people and became more intentional about the, the image that I was putting out there, that would probably be summer of 2020, so how long, like two and a half years ago? Is that right? Yes. Math is not in my personal brand, so. <laughs> so, yeah. Does that help? Does that make sense? OK. You, you kind of just answered my oh. question, but what I wanted to ask was, how do you feel like your personal brand has evolved since from like where you started to intentionally build it? And if you've purposefully evolved it in some way to kind of match who you were like becoming? Um, so I think actually the biggest thing with that is actually the travel part. Um, I, uh, I always thought it would be so cool to be like a travel influencer, get all my travel paid for and all that. And I probably could do that. Like it's kind of in my niche, but I quickly realized that I do not want to be paid to travel. Travel is like a hobby for me and it's like my sanctuary. Like I love traveling. I love putting my phone away while I travel, which is not conducive to being an influencer. <laughs> and so I, Quickly, that was one key thing that shifted is not everything needs to be on my public personal brand. I don't need all every part of me to be out there. So I think that's one thing that really shifted was feeling like I needed to put every part of me out there and just reprioritizing to what I put out there and what I keep for myself. So sometimes I will post while I travel, but sometimes I'll say this is, this is for me right now. I don't need 
people to know that I'm out here doing this. Um, and then also, yeah, just the intentionality. I think that I ca stopped caring about seeming cool. <laughs> For a long time, I just wanted to seem cool on social media. I was like, I want, I want people to think that I look cool or I act cool, whatever. I stopped caring about that um, as much. I still kind of want to seem cool, but I don't want to seem like I'm totally lame, but <laughs> I do want, but I, I stopped, I, I started just uh, focusing more on who I am authentically than trying to be the people that I think look really cool. Like Indie Blue looks really cool. I could never be that, that's just not me. So I started striving more for authenticity than the cool girl sort of thing. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Doesn't have to be about personal branding. Sarah? <laughs> How, um, how could you reach out to maybe, let's say, other creators who are doing something similar to you that you might want to uh, team up with or learn something from, but like in a non <laughs> in a non cringy way? <laughs> that's kind of like the key with so much of this is like, how do you do it without like feeling cringy? And that's like also the thing is like you kind of have to accept the cringe. <laughs> like it's, it's all cringy, and everybody everybody gets it. So, for example. Um, one girl that reached out to me when I was first doing this, uh, she's so sweet, she just messaged me and said like, hey, do you wanna have like a little Zoom date? And we just chatted on Zoom for a little bit, got to know each other, and like a few months later, she started a podcast and invited me to be on it. So that opened up a really easy opportunity there. It was like my first, one of my first speaking things, speaking engagements, um, I guess if you could call a podcast that. But um, yeah, just the first step is just following people. Just follow people who, post similar or interesting content, um, connect with them, and just send them a message and just say like, hey, you seem like super cool, that's it. I do that all the time where someone follows me back or I follow someone back and I say, you seem super cool, that's it. Like, and then we'll message or we'll comment on things. I comment on people's posts like all the time. I comment on everybody's posts being like, this is so cute or you're so cool or this is iconic, whatever. And just kind of keeping fresh in people's minds but also to help create that like, that bond, I guess, by just continuing to engage with them in any way that I can, you know? And it does lead to things. I'm gonna, well, I don't know. I shouldn't talk about things that I'm gonna do if they're not public yet. But I, uh, one girl I just followed, she's making an app for solo travelers. And so I'm gonna start working with her um, to work on that app. So, you know, just things like that. She's not a big creator or anything. She's just solo traveling and she followed me. I saw a little pop-up like follows you and I was like cool follow back and uh, now I'm gonna help her with promoting her app so things like that just reach out just follow people is she from California or South I think so maybe I don't know I didn't check where she's from ah yeah that's probably her okay. yeah yes um, I was wondering like uh, I thought there are so many people who create love right now and uh, I would, I would, uh, and I kind of myself I kind of wonder too because I do have previous posts a lot about traveling and I wonder how do you feel that you stand out like not you personally but like how do you find yourself like like you're like how how can you stand out from all these other people who do the same thing? That's a really good question because um I mean, there is like the technical side of, side of things with, uh, wait, blogs or vlogs, video or blogs, blogs okay. Um, both are kind of difficult to stand out with, but um, with blogging specifically, uh, a lot of it can just be technical skills. Learning SEO, uh, using Pinterest is really great. Um, promoting your content, things like that. Like that can help you stand out by just making you visible. Um, but also, posting about specific things, like being very specific about what you post. So if you uh, go travel to a country and you make a post that's like filling in the gap, so restaurants in this place, or uh, things you can do to feel like a local, like things like that, but making very specific posts, I think that also helps. And as you go, to be honest, like as you create and post, just starting to post, you'll start to feel like your thing come forward. You'll start to feel like, okay, I do this in every post. This makes me stand out a bit. Um, but especially like the, the, that unique selling point, which is a huge thing in like marketing, um, it it's, takes time to figure that out. So post for a while, see where you start to feel your differences come in. Um, 
but yeah, just try things out, like trying things out, test it out, post about some random little things. Like my blog is a mess of just every little thing that I suddenly go, oh my God, I'm gonna tell everybody about this. Like <laughs> it's not my main channel, so I just put whatever is on there. But yeah, just share everything and you'll start to find your way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes? I want to ask about university. Why have you decided to choose exactly this university? AAU? Well, <laughs> it's not a very good reason. <laughs> um, I was 18 and just wanted to leave the US. And like, I really, uh, I wanted to go on a gap year. I wanted to travel. Like I said, in high school, travel was like my thing. And my thing as in, I had been to like two other countries but I was a travel goddess. So, <laughs> and um, small town, really small. Um, and so I, uh, I just wanted to travel. I was trying to convince my parents to, well, my parents were for me kind of doing a gap year, um, but they also like really wanted me to go to university and get an education. And so this was uh, a compromise where I could go to university abroad. Um, I could get my education, I could go abroad and I could live abroad long term, which was really cool. And also there was no debt because I, you know, it's affordable. So that's really why I chose AAU. And I was looking at a few other universities across Europe, but I actually entered as a journalism major and it was the journalism program that really pulled me in. I don't remember why anymore, but I really, really liked the journalism program. Um, and then I switched within like one semester to humanities. So I don't know why it pulled me in so much, but yeah. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> maybe that doesn't sell school very well. <laughs> but it's true, like it was, there are those things that were really key for me. Anything else? Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna wrap up. Um, if those of you who are regulars in this building, you know Cafe de Taxis, for those of you who are not, uh, if it will be the same way you entered the courtyard. There is a little uh, cozy cafe called Cafe de Taxis, which is our university meeting point. And there are some uh, drinks and refreshments. And basically, you can ask um, any beer, wine, soft drink at the bar uh, on us. And spend a bit more time, maybe, in each other and advise on the work a bit and, and have a chat with our responses. And yeah. Like Grow your community, your, your network. Thank you. I hope it was helpful. <laughs> Thank you.